Jeez, slow down, Ethereum. It's not even my final form yet. Ethereum just flipped. It got a massive upgrade called the London Hard Fork Upgrade, and it is arguably the biggest upgrade that Ethereum has ever had in its entire life. And the price went to over $3,000, which is pretty crazy. So first, a disclosure about my holdings. I have roughly 100 Ethereum coins across all of my accounts. And I'm telling you this so you know why I'm making this video, because I have a self-interest in making sure Ethereum is going up in value. But I was lucky enough to buy into Ethereum when each coin was worth roughly $200. I put in $25,000 of my own money, and it magically turned into over $300,000, which is pretty cool. I'm not telling you that to show off. I'm not telling you that because I think I'm smart and you should listen to me because the truth is that investment could have just as easily gone in the other direction and I could have lost all of my money. But I took a calculated risk based on the same story that I see repeating itself in the world of crypto again and again, which is an asset goes up in price, people FOMO in, they buy in, the price goes up even more, more people FOMO in, the price then crashes, and then people sell out because they get scared and they call crypto a scam. And I've seen this story play out time and time again since as early as 2009. So it's the people that really stick around after those crashes to really understand the technology that end up making most of the money. So hopefully you stick around to the end of the video because I promise it's gonna be very useful. And then we'll talk about what's gonna to happen to Ethereum's price. So let's talk about the Ethereum London hard fork upgrade. Hi, my name is Andre Jig. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're feeling better than I sound. I sound really nasally because I have a cold. Thankfully, it's not the Roni Rona, so I'll be just fine. But what is this new upgrade and what the heck does it have to do with London? So this London hard fork upgrade basically has five new, what are called EIPs, that is Ethereum Improvement Proposals. Now this newest one that just went live is sort of like the London Tower Bridge in that it bridges Ethereum 1.0 to Ethereum 2.0, which is set to go live in Q1 of next year. Also, I made that up. I have no idea what it has to do with London, but it makes sense to me, so I'm sticking with it. Now, this new improvement basically changes the way that we pay fees when using Ethereum, and here's how. In May of this year, for example, we had to pay as much as $69 just to send someone Ethereum. So if I wanted to send you a dollar, I would have to pay the miners $69 just to be able to do that. And at that point, it doesn't even make sense to use Ethereum, which is why that's a huge problem. So this newest upgrade sort of fixes that. Now remember, the fees that we pay are fees that get sent to miners, and it's sort of like their incentive to keep Ethereum safe in the first place. Think of it as sort of like the transactional costs necessary to use Ethereum in the first place. Now, those transactional costs are called gas fees. Anytime we transact, our transactions sort of get grouped together and sent to a block of a limited size. Same like Bitcoin. Bitcoin, for example, has roughly a one megabyte block size limit, which means on average, you can fit anywhere between one to two and a half thousand transactions per 10 minutes. That's how often the blocks are created. Now, Ethereum is sort of same, same, but different principle. It doesn't use megabytes. Instead, it uses roughly 15 million gas units in terms of a target rate for each block. Now, that block can sort of contract or expand depending on what the network needs it to do. And the reason that Ethereum becomes so ridiculously expensive to use is because if somebody creates a popular NFT or some big time YouTuber creates a token that's based on Ethereum or Ethereum gets an upgrade and people want to buy and sell Ethereum because they want in on the action. And that means more transactions, which means we have to bribe miners with more gas fees for our transactions to actually get included in the block. I know that sounds complicated, but in this analogy, just imagine you're waiting at a bus stop, and in Ethereum's case, it's like these buses are coming every 10 to 15 seconds. That's how often the blocks are created on Ethereum. Every 10 to 15 seconds you see a bus. That's a lot of buses, but if every time the bus stops to pick you up, the bus is full, you're just not gonna get on unless you bribe the bus driver with a ton of money, you're just not gonna be included. And that's sort of an overly simplified explanation of how that works. Now, this new upgrade sort of changes the whole dynamic and that's what we'll get into right now. And then we'll talk about the future of Ethereum's price because it's about to get crazy. Now remember, this new London hard fork upgrade technically has five new upgrades, but I'm only gonna focus on one of them because the other four are extremely technical and I'm not even gonna get into that. And the most important one anyway is something called EIP 1559, which changes the way that we bid to be included in the blocks. So in the same bus driver analogy, imagine 
all the bus drivers are now told, by the way guys, your customers are no longer going to bid to be included in your bus. Instead, their ticket prices are going to be a predetermined gas fee that's based on some algorithmic calculation. So now, whenever we pay fees to be included in the blocks, those ticket prices and all the money that we raise for it just gets burned. It's just gonna be vanished into thin air. So this upgrade sort of changes this auction style competitiveness to where we no longer have to outbid each other to be included in the bus. And that's just a way of fixing so that we don't have to pay seven Seventy dollars to you know send somebody a dollar. That way fees are much more predictable and much smoother. Now the second upgrade or a second part of this EIP 1559 is a change to the block size limit. So in the same analogy, it's the size of the bus. But having said all that, here is how all these new changes are going to affect Ethereum's price. The first big change is people are gonna expect Ethereum to become a deflationary currency. So let me run some math by you to see if this adds up for you, to see if it all makes sense. So right now the block time of Ethereum is between 10 to 15 seconds and every block rewards Rewards miners with around two Ethereums. So let's just say a 13 second average block time. And we could say that with this math, that's around 9.2 coins that get created every single minute. So if we multiply 9.2 by 60 minutes, we get an hourly rate of creation of around 552 coins. And if we multiply 552 by 24 hours, we get 13,248 coins per day. Now, if we multiply that by 365, we get roughly 4.8 million coins that we are creating every single year. That's how many coins are pumped into the system. That is the inflation rate. Now, if you want to get even more technical with it, you could actually divide 4.8 million, which is the yearly rate of creation, by 117 million coins, which is how many Ethereum coins exist in total today. And doing the math on that, we get around 4.1%. That is the true rate of inflation on Ethereum. 4.1% per year. Now, so far, this new upgrade, this new fee structure, means that in the first 24 hours, we've actually burned around 4,500 Ethereum coins, which remember is money that would normally go to pay to the bus drivers or the miners. But in this case, we just evaporated all this money out of existence. So if we subtract the daily before, which was 13,500 coins, minus the 4,500, which we got whenever we created this, we get a new daily rate of creation of around 9,000 coins. So if we multiply 9,000 a day by 365, we take the result and we divide it by the total market cap, the total Ethereum in existence, which is 117 million, we get a new inflation rate of 2.8%. So technically we are still very much inflationary because remember deflationary means we would have a fixed supply or that we would be burning more coins out of existence than we're actually creating. So we're still inflationary, but we did reduce the inflation rate. So now that I've done all this math, Here's what it actually means. This is really cool because the math adds up so beautifully. Check this out. The rate of inflation of 4.1% reduced to 2.8% is a rate of reduction of around 32%. You can do the math yourself by taking 2.8 divided by 4.1, moving your decimals over and then subtracting the result from 100, you'll get 32. Now check this out. The price of Ethereum as of last month at the end of July was around $2,400, but it closed out August 7th at $3,168. That's an increase of exactly 32%. So the price increased in lockstep with the inflation reduction. So now the market sees Ethereum as being roughly a third more valuable, which makes perfect sense. So now for the most exciting part. I'm really glad you made it this far because this is why I think Ethereum is going to crush it next year. It's going to be the year of Ethereum and please watch this next part very carefully. The biggest upgrade is gonna happen next year in Q1 of 2022 called The Merge. And this is where we're gonna go from Ethereum 1 to Ethereum 2, proof of work to proof of stake. When this happens, we're also gonna get what's called the cliffening, which is similar to how in Bitcoin we have the halving. This happens every four years where the block reward gets cut in half. So we reduce the rate of supply creation by about 50%. Now, when this happens for Ethereum though, we're gonna reduce the rate of supply creation by 90%. That is massive. Now, past results don't guarantee future performance, but we can sort of model this based on the London hard fork upgrade and say that if Ethereum increased by 32%, 
after the fork upgrade or around that same time period, we could also safely somewhat assume that maybe Ethereum could increase by as much as 90% in anticipation of the cliffening. And Ethereum's price could go up by as much as 90%. And that in combination with EIP 1559, which is the stuff I put you to sleep about in this video, changing the fee structure, could make Ethereum a deflationary currency in the future, especially because there could be a time in Ethereum's life where we are burning more coins than we are creating, which would make it a lot more rare and thus more valuable. And the other thing I'm really excited about is that once the merge happens, the energy output of Ethereum will decrease by as much as 99%. That's because proof of stake is a lot more energy efficient than proof of work. And when that happens, it could make Ethereum one of, if not the greenest cryptocurrencies on the planet. And that means people like Elon Musk and other hedge funds will definitely want to get their hands on it. I really think that next year is going to be the year of Ethereum. I apologize for the super short video. I have a cold. I think I have a fever coming on. So I'm going to hop back into bed and start to feel sorry for myself again. And in the meantime, I hope everything made sense. As always, don't forget to smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Go get up to $250 worth of free Bitcoin with this BlockFi link right here. Go get your two free stonks with Weeble when you deposit $100. Go track them automatically with the spreadsheet link down below in my Patreon. My sales pitch is over. I love you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you back here on Monday. Friday, sometimes a Wednesday, and I'd love to know your thoughts about Ethereum. In the meantime, I'll see you soon.